Hello learner, my name is Dr. Balam Singh Tafoti. I am working as Assistant Professor in Department of Computer Science, NIT at Uttarakhand Open University, Halwani. So learner, after going through this video lecture, you will able to learn about the basic concept of GSP, that is Java Server Pages, about the advantages of GSP over HTML, and you will learn about the GSP implicit objects. So basically GSP is, stands for Java Server Pages. It is a Java based technology that is used to develop dynamic website, right? So this is the main use of GSP. If you want to create dynamic website, it is better to use GSP or you can use servlet pages also. Both are the Java based technology. So the GSP is uh, extension of servlet because it provides more functionality than servlet. A GSP page consists of both HTML tag and GSP tag. So this is the main difference between GSP and servlet. GSP pages are easier to maintain than servlet because we can separate designing and development but in servlet we cannot do that. It provides more additional features such as expressions, language, and custom tag, etc. So basically, Java is used for business logic. That is, what the project you want to develop, what the code you should contain, right? And the Java can connect to the databases. Now, GSP is used for multi-purpose, both for UI as well as middle layer completely end to end see if you just have gsp you can develop end to end project where front front end you can develop middle layer you can develop using jdbc you can uh, connect to the databases and get everything so if you uh, know gsp you can know you you can uh, do complete project right but right now in the industry gsp is used for UI user interface. So let's see why GSP is preferred over the servlet. GSP provide an easier way to code dynamic web pages. So when we compare to servlet, the first thing is that it is easier to code. GSP does not require additional file like Java class and web.xml. So if you want to execute GSP file, it does not require any additional file like Java class file and web.xml is also not required. Where in case of servlet, web.xml is required. So any changes in the GSP code is handled by web controller, that is application server like Tomcat and does not require recompilation. GSP page can directly access and web.xml mapping is not required like in servlet. So using GSP, one can easily separate presentation and business logic. As a web designer can design and update GSP page pages, creating the presentation layer and Java developer can write server side complex and computational code without concerning the web designing. So this is the main use of GSP and both the layers can easily interact over HTTP request. Now come up to the GSP execution procedure. So now look at how exactly GSP is getting compiled. So what is GSP file? How GSP compile? When you compile, what happens? A GSP will be converted to a servlet file. The circular file is compiled and generated a dot class file. This dot class file is loaded into memory and executed by JVM as usual. Now I will develop a, a file called hello.gsp. Now if you com, uh, compile the GSP, what uh, is uh, generated, it, it generates a servlet file. So when I write a GSP, it gets compiled to a servlet uh, file only. 
the circular file is again what file it is a java file only okay so if uh, uh, so now if i compile java file what it does it it generate dot class file for me that dot class file get loaded into the memory and it is executed again i will explain if you compile gsp file using gsp compiler it get converted into a servlet file okay so the servlet file is a java file the java file has to be compiled and finally gets into dot class file so now if you look in detail the execution procedure that is what i said the gsp file using gsp translator it converts into the servlet file that is dot java file okay the java file is compiled and it generate dot class file the dot class file is loaded into the memory and executed by gre okay and that is how gsp get executed right so advantages of gsp over html as in servlet user need not write code for html and java separately you can combine both of them servlet is only uh, for business logic right so what the project has to be done and has to be specified in servlet as in gsp can be used for front end also that is user uh, interface or uh, uh, as it is has uh, as uh, it has html file and uh, the business logic uh, as it has java file so gsp is a combination of both html and java so if you look at completely writing the servlet is little complex when compared to gsp so writing gsp is very very easily and extremely easy next uh, advantage is uh, dynamic uh, compilation in gsp in servlet what happen i write a servlet and compile it and run it if you want uh, to modify let's say i have modified uh, the server file again i have to compile it and bring on the apache tomcat and run the program okay because the dot class file has to be loaded uh, on the server uh, the server dot uh, the, on the server gsp uh, not uh, gsp is not like that if you write once it uh, gets loaded and executed if you modify the code not need to bring uh, down on apache tomcat server just refresh the browser the changes will uh, reflect it so uh, uh, gsp is used for a uh, three tier architecture and two tier architecture so that three tier ar architecture means that the front end middle layer and back end layer what uh, uh, do you mean uh, what do you mean by uh, front end the user interface what uh, will be uh, displayed to the user for example uh, create a gmail account so i will uh, be given a form fill up the detail first name last name and everything that is front end front end and the middle layer is the logic of the project and uh, uh, and the last layer is back end layer uh, that is database but basically industry does not require recommended two tier architecture right so learner next is the gsp implicit objects uh, there are nine implicit object in gsp these object are created by the web container that are available to all the gsp pages right so what are the nine implicit object in gsp the available implicit object are out implicit object request implicit object response implicit object config implicit object application implicit object session implicit object page context implicit object page of uh, page implicit object and exception implicit object now you can see the gsp implicit object and their type are out is the implicit object and which type are gsp writer request is the implicit object 
of type HTTP servlet request. Response is the implicit object of type HTTP servlet response. Config is the type of servlet config. Application is the type of servlet context. Session is the type of HTTP session. Page context is the type of page context. Page is the type of object and exception is the type of throwable. So these are the GSP implicit object and their types. So first one is the uh, GSP uh, out implicit object. The GSP out implicit object of type GSP writer. The main task of GSP writer is writing the data into the buffer. GSP provide an implicit object named out. It is the object of GSP writer. In case of servlet, you need to write print writer out is equal to response dot get writer. Where print writer is a class and out is the object response dot get writer. But in JSP, you do not need to write this code because out implicit object automatically write the data into the buffer. Now you can see the example of out implicit object. In, in this example, I have to print the time. Here we use HTML tag. Then we use scriptlet, scriptlet tag. Under scriptlet tag, I used out object out dot print is a method which is used to print the time. Here we have used plus operator whatever we want to print. So here that we want what we want to print. Here Java has a utility package called util insert. We use utility package to print the date and time and calendar is a class under the utility package and calendar has an time get time object which tells that the time as you can see in this example. Second is the GSP request implicit object. The GSP request is an implicit object of type HTTP servlet request created for each GSP request by the web container. It can be used to get request information such as parameter, header information, remote address, server name, server port, content type and character encoding etc. It can be used to uh, set, get and remove attribute from the GSP request scope. Now you can see in this example of GSP request implicit object. In this example, we have used a page of HTML index and here we create a form because we need a text box and a button, right? So here is uh, we create a form for input values and welcome.gsp is for printing the values, right? So in welcome.gsp, we have taken name variable, which is a string type, right? And it's request dot get parameter. Request is an object and get parameter is a method in which we pass username. And finally print the username through the out implicit object, okay? Now, third is the GSP response implicit object. In GSP response implicit object of type HTTP servlet response, right? The instance of HTTP servlet response is created by the web container for each GSP request. It can be used to add or manipulate response such as redirect response to another resources, send error, etc. You can see the example of GSP response implicit object. Here I have created a form 
index.html for input the values. Now I want to give a response to Google and here I have used response implicit object and we want to send the request to Google using dot send request method. Number four is GSP config implicit object. In GSP con, uh, config implicit object of type servlet config, this object can be used to get initialization parameter for a particular GSP page, right? The config object is created by the web container for each GSP page. Generally, it is used to initialization parameter from web.xml file. You can see the example of config implicit object. In this example, we have also used a form namely index.html and created a page which is welcome.gsv which will perform an action. Here we use an implicit object in which we have printed welcome. And we also use a request implicit object which is used for requesting a username and we have taken a string type variable whose name is driver. Here we use the config implicit object. The config implicit object uh, uh, receives the initialization parameter whose name is driver name. Now here I will print driver name through the out.print method. Now uh, we can say that config implicit object is used to access the driver name from the web.xml file. The config, the config implicit object receives the response from the web.xml for what the initialization parameter is. For that we have create web.xml file. The web.xml file will start uh, with web, web app tag, right? So it is the start with web app tag because it found in web application. Under the web tag, we use servlet tag. Then we have given a servlet name, which name is UU, right? So under the servlet name, we have taken GSP file, which uh, will take the welcome.gsp page as we have already created after that we have used init parameter which will denote init, uh, initiation parameter initialization uh, or we can say initiation parameter after that the parameter name will under the initiation parameter right right after that, the parameter name will under the initiation parameter, right? That is D name. Then the uh, value of uh, parameter which is uh, send.jdbc.odbc .jdbc odbc driver that will be print. So we can say that config implicit object will receive the uh, initiation parameter, right? In GSP application is an implicit object of type servlet context. The instance of servlet context is created only, only once by the web container when application or object is uh, deployed on the server. The object can be used to get initialization parameter from a configuration file that is web.xml. It can also be used to get uh, set or remove attribute from the application scope. The initialization parameter can be used by all GSP pages. As you can see the example of application implicit object. We have created uh, um, index.html and welcome. So now fifth is the GSP application implicit object. In GSP application is an implicit object of type uh, sublet context. The instance of servlet context is created by created only once by the web container when application or uh, project is deployed on the server. 
the object can be used to get initialization parameter from the configuration file that is web.xml it can also be used to get set or remove attribute from the application scope this initialization parameter can be used by all gsp pages as you can see in this example so we have created a created index.html and welcome.gsp as we have created in the earlier example but in welcome.gsp page you uh, have to write application dot get init parameter instead of config get init parameter right now in web.xml file context perm tag instead of servlet mapping here you can see we have start web dot application then uh, start servlet and servlet name then we have use gsp file then we have close servlet now when the task of uh, servlet is finished then the task of servlet mapping will start then the name of the servlet is asked then then url pattern then close the tag of servlet mapping now uh, we have uh, used context from not init uh, init init param so what is the difference in uh, config and application in config object we use init parameter and in application object we use context parameter the task of parameter uh, context is that first it takes the name of the parameter and the value of the parameter so in case of config object we use init parameter and in case of application object we use context parameter now six is the session implicit object in gsp session implicit object is a type of http session the java developer can use this object to set get or remove attribute or to get session information as you can see in this example of session implicit object here we use two gsp file that is second.gsp and welcome.gsp file here we have taken the name type variable which is request to the username then we use object for print right so uh, now here we uh, now here the session implicit object set the value of the attribute the implicit object can set get remove the value of the attribute so uh, in this example the session implicit object set the value of the attribute here now can also use an anchor tag for referencing the second dot gsp right so now in the second dot gsp page contain variable which is a string type which is create uh, which is create a session for receiving the value of the value of the attribute of the user then print the name so basically here we provide the connectivity through the session implicit object with the use of anchor type now seventh is the page context implicit object in the gsp page context is an implicit object of type uh, page context class the page context is an object we use to set get remove attribute from one of the following scopes there are uh, four scopes in GS gsp page request session and application using these scopes we can uh, set get remove attribute in gsp pages in gsp page scope is default scope page request session application so there are four scope in gsp page request session and application using these scopes we can set get remove attribute in gsp page scope is the default scope as you can see the example in this example we use page context object which is used for set the attribute and also we give the response 
that is second dot gsp the second dot gsp page is used for get the value of the attribute and print the name so eighth one is the page implicit object in gsp page is an implicit object of type object class this object class is assigned to the reference of auto generated server class as it is written as object page is equal to this so for using this object it must be cast to servlet type for example http servlet page dot log since it is a type of object it is less used because you can use this object directly in gsp for example this dot log so ninth is the uh, exception implicit object in gsp exception is an implicit object of type java dot lang dot throwable class this of obje this object can be used to print the exception but it can only be used in error pages thank you that's it